it's kind of like a popularity contest. And we think we're pretty popular. The Beth Page Best of Long Island Awards are back. And we're up for Best Radio Station. Rock your vote every day at bestoflongisland.com. The voice of Nassau Community College. This is the award-winning 90.3 WHPC HD Garden City. Listen on your smart speaker. Play WHPC. And available on Odyssey and iHeartRadio. Ninety point three WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box. Here every Monday, nine a.m. to ten a.m. It becomes a podcast later on on wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Rob Leonard. Joining me, of course, is my brother and award-winning sports writer Tim Leonard. Good morning, brother. How are you? I'm outstanding, brother. How about yourself? Good to could hear. Be, could be a monumental day in New York sports. It could be, but you know what? We got it. We got to clear a little bit. Um, you know, last week or well, well, last Monday, we uh, did an appearance at R.J. Dugan's, not uh, R.C. Dugan's, I should say, in East, East Meadow. Oh, we're leading with this. Yeah, why not? Go ahead. And uh, yeah, we go, we go to support our, our sports talk friends because you know we're all on the same team here at WHPC. And you know, there, when we got there, there was there was a lot of sports guys, so we didn't join in. We were <laughs> like, okay, we'll just watch and listen. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Like there was a, like six. At massive the grouping. It was like a posse of sports yeah. guys. Yeah. So, you know, Tim and I were hanging out. You know, had some wings and and anyway, so well, Dugans enjoying the good food at Dugans. Anyway, um, there was a guy there who works for the sports <laughs> talk team, brother, who took a shot at people like Tim Leonard. Who is a sports writer. You know that's never going to go well. And he, he said that the sports writers were basically idiots because they're not putting all the juice heads in uh, from the 90s. I don't know what that's what Into he said, the Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, let's not misrepresent what he said, brother. Well, he, basically, he, said. he said, well, I didn't, he didn't say juice heads. I'm, I'm using that term. But, but. but my, my, my problem with, with what was said was, was that the comment... He was, said all was, sports writers were fat. No, he didn't say that. Yes, he, he did. He, stops doing, stop he did doing say that. that. When he said I it, didn't, I didn't hear that. Yeah, you were, you were you were not paying attention. Maybe I heard him say fat. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, Wally Matthews would definitely have something to say about that. Of course, Wally's in good shape. Me, me in my better days would, would have had something to say about that. Uh, but what the the thing that bothered me the most about what they said, and apparently it was said again on the air, which really infuriated me, was that the Writers who vote for the Hall of Fame are predominantly old men. Yeah. Now, as I said uh, last week on on their show, right, a, a good number of those people are friends of mine. Yeah, you know them. <laughs> you know some uh, of them. So that is number one. But number two, and, and really this is the most important part, you don't get to vote for the Hall of Fame unless you have put in at least five years as a beat writer. Right. That That is the, the the minimum requirement. Now, as somebody who has covered baseball, I, I didn't even get to the five years. And I can tell you, it is by far the most difficult beat to cover. Of course. Because you're you're dealing with, with ridiculous deadlines. You're dealing with games that just keep getting longer and longer. Uh, you're, you're dealing with, with athletes who, who are becoming more and more prima donnas. Uh, and and now with COVID, you're dealing with clubhouses that are completely closed. Right. So the fact that anybody is putting in five years on a baseball beat to qualify to vote for the Hall of Fame, so that by itself is is pretty much going to eliminate a lot of quote unquote younger voters. Right. Because you need to put your time in. You need to earn the vote. And it's Major League Baseball, not Minor League Baseball, because you can do five years covering you know. Um, the could, Albany Colony Yankees, well, well, who don't exist anymore. Who don't exist, but yeah. you, know, you did cover them for a while. Yes. But the point being, and, and the most important point with this, that, like I just said, is that you earn that Hall of Fame vote. Right. It's not just given away and, hey, you want to vote for the Hall of Fame? No. You earn it because you've covered the sport, and after five years, if you're still on a beat after five years, chances are you know the sport really well. Yeah, and, and most likely you stay in there, and you've made your you know your connections and everything like that. Now we don't want to make fun of Michael Merlot, who's going to be hosting Sports Talk this afternoon from four to five. Yeah, he might bring it up. He might bring it up again. We don't know. 
You know, we should have had on brother. Mistake. I just, you know, if if we want to continue this, maybe next week we might be might could do it. How Bach? How Bach is exactly he, the kind perfect, of guy. Perfect. The example. kind of guy that they're making fun of. Hal Bach is is a life lifer, a baseball lifer. Yeah, a guy who covered baseball for the Associated Press for decades. Yep, and you and, know, and and somebody whose whose baseball knowledge, if anybody who doesn't respect Hal Bach's baseball knowledge doesn't know anything about baseball. Remember what he said though, which I, I didn't know. Maybe which you part, knew brother? It. What that for the World Series? The back then it was UPI and AP. You know they were the two big services. Right. They had the first two seats in the in the box. It, it was in the, exactly. In the, they they had the first two seats, so they would, you know, the guy in the back didn't, you know, wasn't going to send the first two seats. Hal and whoever the UPI guy was. Maybe we should Oscar I, Madison. I, I, <laughs> Oscar Madison. I'll look into um, see if we get we'll Hal. Look into that, because Hal loves you. He lo- he loves our show. Claire Smith would be another person. Claire that, Smith. We've had her on. We've had her on. Claire Smith. Not 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 an old man. No no no. A woman who. In fact, Claire Smith. If we got Claire Smith on. Oh, she'll she'll tear some people up. <laughs> yeah, she will. You know, this might be some, an idea for a show, like a separate show, because we've been thinking. Let's come get some. We've been thinking, brother and I, Tim and I, have been thinking of doing a second show during the week that would be a podcast only. We've been given permission to do that. Crea- but, creating some some, uh, some some other content. Right. So we've been thinking about that. Will we do it? I don't know. It takes. It's a lot of work to do this show. But anyway, just to let you know, if you want to hear the complete statement that Tim made, it is on our podcast site, uh, Spreaker.com. It's on uh, WHPC's uh, NCCRadio.org. It's everywhere we'll, you can we'll find po- us. We'll post it on the From, from the Press Box Facebook page, too. It's I don't already know there. Oh, it's is already, it already there? Then, already then there. go to the From the Press Box Facebook yeah, it's, page. I, I put on all the pages. It's, it's about four minutes, and Tim is just – basically, you're destroying Michael Malo, you know, host of Sports Talk every Monday – 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Along with a lot of other people, it's, it's not just him. So I like him. I like well, Mike. Like let's him not too. get. Nice let's guy. not. I, I don't want to. I don't nice want to get into a war of personalities here. He just said something that it, it was. It was a little ignorant. I'm sorry. It was. It's, it's the ignorance of youth. He's he's up and coming, brother. He's up I, and coming, I, I I like the kid. I think he does a great job. Yep. But every once in a while, you make a stay. Like like back in the day, brother. <clears throat> back in the day when when I did. The the uh, the Troy record college hockey top ten. Yes. Best college hockey poll in the country. Ever. And, and I went, no, well, maybe, probably. But I went on a radio station in Minnesota because they wanted to talk about it. There was like four different polls at the time. And I went on there, <clears throat> young, kind of stupid, cocky, didn't know, really know the history. So, you know, I was a little, like, feeling, you know, feeling myself. Right. And I found out literally on that show while I was doing live radio that um, Gary McCord, you know, Gary McCord from CBS? Yeah, yeah. Started, like, the first college hockey poll back in the day. I had no idea. Oh, okay. So I found out stuff, and I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm not quite the best. Uh, you know, like, but you learn stuff as right. you go along. Of course. And it, it's you don't know everything when, when, when you're a, a young, you're, you're, when he, you're full of, full he, of uh, should, something in vinegar, as the saying goes. He should be calling goes. Tim Leonard every day. To get learn the sports. No, I'm I'm, I'm busy, bro. I, 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 I'm busy. You know, you know? I mean, our cousin Matt Leonard, who also call me, works call here. Call me every once in a while, Matt, yes, but you know, he's not also day. part of the sports talk family. I think he's on today too. Cousin he, Matt's our boy. He, he's you know he's on he was on right before the Nassau uh, Nassau Madhouse thing. So I mean, morning Madhouse. Morning Madhouse. Yeah. I couldn't remember that for a second. Yeah. So we call him cousin Matt. You know, he's not our cousin. I mean, he's not like cousin Kawhi. He's he's not a, he's not the family reunions. Cousin cousin Myers Leonard. Another Myers one. Leonard, Kawhi Leonard. You know. So, but you know, he could show up because you know our family is pretty open to yeah, having anyone right. show up. Really, the last name is Leonard. You know, if you bring Just a if you sneak bring right a, in, if you bring a case of beer, you're in. Bring case, yeah. You bring a case of beer. That's the way bring to a, get in. Bring a pound of bologna. <laughs> pound of bologna, <laughs> five pounds of hamburger meat for the grill. You're in. Okay, brother. Let's uh, let's let's talk about what. Let's quickly talk about the Mets because nothing has been announced yet. It's a hot story, brother. It is the hot story, hot though, because story. the Giants and Jets both won yesterday. We should be on top of that right now. But here, but here's not. here's how big this Mets story is, brother. Because it, it, let's face it, it's we're talking. It's the end of November, right? And it's got to take a lot to push the NFL out of the lead spot on from the press box. Yes, especially when they both won. How often I just does said that, that happen? I just said that, brother. How often does that happen? Never. Both the Jets and the Giants win, and the the lead story on From the Press Box today, this morning, is the Mets. And that's because 
Max Scherzer, brother. Yep. Max Scherzer I know. might be a Met before our show is over. We hope it, it, we can announce it during our show. But we, we, Met fans are going, look, do you, do you know how many Met fans last night at 1 o'clock in the morning, maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, were, were hitting the refresh button? Yeah, well, on on MLB.com, on ESPN.com, on Mets.com, Mets.com, on every newspaper.com. They, please, please, Max, somebody, somebody say he's signing. And there are so many idiots on Twitter who are saying, oh, you know, like, oh, deal's done. But, but they don't know. They don't. Just know. idiots. They just want people to retweet them so they, they can labor. Trolls. Don't, don't, pay, don't feed the trolls. The only time but, I believe that type of thing is when a sports writer or the team itself puts out the, uh, the situation. So that's well, the team always puts it out last. So you don't you don't wait for the team to put it out because the team is always last. But someone so the team knows and then they call their favorite sports writer. <laughs> you know they leak it to you know Joel Sherman or someone. Exactly. You know Joel Sherman, John Heyman, Jeff Jeff Passan. Heyman's usually, you, usually one of those three. Heyman gets the most of them. Eh. Whatever is. Well, at least he tries. Heyman them. started at Newsday, by the way. He started yeah. at Newsday. Well, you did too. Well, we worked t- t- in theory. We were colleagues. I can say that. Did you ever meet him? Uh, I've met him a few times, but okay. you know, never like you know, he's not my my pal or anything. We should have him on. No, he, we're not that we're not that close. We're not F-A-F. Plus, I think he lives in Milwaukee. I'm not no, even 100 percent sure where he is. But he, he, that was always a weird thing back then, because that was back. I mean, back when I was at Newsday, we're talking right. we're talking early Long 90s. Time. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the the information and technology world it is today. But John Heyman was covering New York baseball and somehow lived in Milwaukee. And I was like, how does that work? <laughs> I don't know. But that's that's he was ahead of his time because nowadays. You know, I mean, it's people live everywhere. It doesn't it, even matter where you live. It anymore. Almost doesn't, especially when you can't don't can't have no access to the locker room, right? Or the field during the games, exactly before the games, exactly. Right. Anyway, um, Max Scherzer. Let's hope the Mets get him. This would be a major deal. This would be, to me, the last time the Mets made a big deal like this, to me at least, would be with uh, Mike Piazza. You know, I, I, I was thinking different, brother, because Piazza, they they made the trade, they brought him in, and and. You know, it wasn't like Piazza could go anywhere else. Max Scherzer has options. Well, that's I, this. This is the Pedro Martinez deal, because you remember how how Omar Minaya had had to really pay Pedro. Yeah, he and, and he had to say, "All right, Pedro, I don't know, I don't know what else what else you're getting, but we are just going to overwhelm you with money because we desperately need the credibility that you're going to bring our team." Right, and look what happened to him. He, he he throws his arm out. Yeah, but they knew that was going to happen. Yeah, but it didn't it didn't matter. But because you know what? The, the, to me, hold it, brother. You know, don't don't don't, don't, don't don't get angry. But the problem for Pedro was that he was on a hot Red Sox team and they won the World Series. What two years later? Three years later? So what? So he misses a second chance to be a World Champion. That is a major thing. He goes to the Mets. His arm eventually turns into you know a string bean or something, and he's he's basically gone. I would rather been, I would rather take less money and and make, if if a player if you told a player you'll take less money but you'll win the championship, most of them will take the championship. Probably, but pay, Pedro wanted to get paid first right, of all. Right, right. He wanted. He, he felt disrespected. I hate yeah. that. I hate that word. But that's that's you know that was the word he used back then. But but from the Mets perspective back then, they needed Pedro because Pedro was was the dom- one of the dominant pitchers in baseball at that time. Right. And they That's needed true. they needed That's him true. to bring bring credibility that credibility to say all right we are a destination for for free agents and for players, and that's what Max Scherzer does for the Mets right now. Because let's face it, the Mets were terrible last year. You you can talk about all you want about how how many how many days they were in first place, but they it finished was, below five hundred. It, it wasn't a dominant first place, but I, but as I said all of last season while they were first place, you know if they if they win the division with this crappy. Uh, um, you know, uh, not ratings, <laughs> uh, standings. 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 Uh, that. So what? They they made the playoffs. Exactly. I mean, look, look at you know the Braves won the division and the Braves wound up winning the World Series. Nobody right. expected the World Series winner to come out of the the, the moribund National League East. Not me. But that's what happened. Okay, brother. Let's talk about who the Mets signed this past week. Uh, but wait, uh, just before. Well, before hurry we up! Hurry up! We got time. We're running out of time already. <laughs> The, the the reports that we're hearing about is, is about Scherzer. Either three or four years, forty two million dollars a year. Okay, that is by far the highest average annual annual average value of any contract in baseball. Is it worth it? No, no, for, not forty two million. I'm sorry, 
Is Garrett Cole that, worth that's, uh, all that's, that money? That's no. what the Mets need to do to bring him here. I don't know. They, they and the him. Mets desperately need pitching. They desperately do. And, and So this is the guy. Kevin Gossman signed with, with the Blue Jays yesterday, five years for $110 million. Kevin, okay. Ga- Kevin Gossman was released by the Baltimore Orioles in 2019. Okay. I'm I'm more than happy to pay Max Scherzer whatever million. whatever amount he wants know. That's a lot. to bring him in because he you know what you're getting you know you're getting a Cy Young caliber pitcher. You know, he said that about Garrett well, Cole, you know. Yeah, and he was second in the Cy Young Award this year. What's the problem? I don't know. He didn't, but he wasn't an influence on that team. Of course he, he was. Yanks, what are you talking about? Because we're horrible. Are you on year. drugs? No, I'm not. I wish I would. I would have to listen to you. <laughs> so anyway, let's talk about what the Mets got. Let's go over the Mets got last week because. <sighs> They they signed a lot of people, and yeah, you know, Steve Cohen turned the Mets into into the team that the Mets fans want to see. Yeah, overwhelm them with money. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they win. Well, as, we're, you know, gonna, as we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see. As you know, as a Yankee fan, and we'll and tell everyone, well, the Yankees signed all these people. And, you know, they don't they don't do that. Yeah, anymore. I, I don't want to hear this anymore about how the Yankees buy titles. Who are the Yankees? Who who are the Yankees? Everybody else is, is buying players and spending money. And what what's Brian Cashman doing? He's just sitting on the sideline. Okay, look at, well, look well, at Hal told him to. Hal said, "I want to keep some money." Look at all these guys Hank's gone now. Let's let's save some money. I got to fly my airplane. This, over this guy's here. gone. This guy's gone. Oh, we can't sign him. Okay, anyway, Corey Seager. Anyway, uh. Let's start out uh, with uh, I don't know who you want to start off with, brother. Please. Starling Marte, brother, is is Star the Marte. big the big offensive signing. Four years, seventy eight million dollars. Okay, good good center fielder, very good defender, uh, speed. He should steal at least forty bases for the Mets this year. He will give them a top of the lineup presence along with Brandon Nimmo, who who brings the on base percentage. So the Mets, the top of the lineup for the Mets is, is pretty much set. Um, what what that means for Pete Alonso and the middle of the order, <clears throat> we'll, we'll we'll see. But Pete Alonso and and whoever else is batting three, four, five, those guys will have plenty of RBI opportunities with, with those two guys at the top of the lineup. Okay, uh, Eduardo Escobar, two years, twenty million dollars. I tell you what, that's cheap. Th- this is my favorite signing out of all of them. Why is that? As much as I like Marte and I like this game and I like what he brings to the Mets, I love Eduardo Escobar. This guy is an under-the-radar guy. For two years and $20 million, if you give Eduardo Escobar 500 at-bats, right. he will he will replace Michael Conforto's production. And I'm not talking about 2021 Michael Conforto because he was garbage last year. I'm talking about 25 home runs, 90 RBIs, and a 250 batting average because Michael Conforto has never been a big batting average guy except for the, the, the uh, 2020 season. He's going to give you that, and he's and he's going to give it to you for tw- for ten million dollars a year. I love that signing, I, unless and 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 he plays either second base or third base, so you you get a little versatility from him. I I think I, I legitimately think that's the best signing out of the three. I would agree, and plus it's only a two year deal, so if it doesn't work out, he's gone. Right. And uh, Mark Kanha, Can- Kana, Kana, two years, two years, twenty six point and a half million, a third year option. Canada is a guy who's played for 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 the Athletics for right. for several years. Uh, been a productive hitter. Another guy who brings uh, positional versatility. He likely will will slot in at right field, uh, Marte in center, and Nimmo in left, which gives the Mets a, a certainly a better outfield than they had last year. It's still not a, like an all star outfield, but it's considerably better than right, what they right, had last year. Definitely. Now the issue that I'm running into with the Mets right now is they sign these three guys. You still have Dom Smith. You still have Jeff McNeil. Right. You still have J.D. Davis. And and let's not forget, Robinson Cano is coming back, brother. <laughs> Robbie Cano, don't you know? Trade him. For some... You can't trade him. You what? can't trade that contract. What are you kidding? Pick up the contract. They, 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 would have to, they would have to eat 90% of the contract and probably throw in a prospect to trade Cano for whatever whatever bag of baseballs that somebody wants to get, it, w- it would be it would be a, a cl- just a clear giveaway, and you'd have to include a prospect, like I said. But the Mets Isn't certainly this his last not, year though is for the deal. He, I think he's got one more. I think it's two more years after oh. this one. So, so it's it's twenty twenty two and twenty three. I'm I think I'm pretty sure. But we're talking about Cano. And and McNeil and a lot of these guys who are, I mean, it's just a mass of bodies right now. The Mets are going to have to make a trade. 
I don't know who they're going to trade McNeil for. I would love it if Cashman would get on the phone with with the new Mets GM, Billy Epler, because they're pals from back in the day when Epler worked for Cashman. I, I would love to see Jeff McNeil on the Yankees. Love. Because here, here, here the Yankees are. They got rid of Tyler Wade. They need a guy who can play a bunch of positions. That's Jeff McNeil. I don't know that Jeff McNeil would be thrilled about being being a, a platoon guy or a role player or a backup or anything like that. But I love Jeff McNeil's game. And and the only reason that he wasn't the player that he has been last year is for whatever reason, he started trying to crush everything. Jeff McNeil's a kind of guy who can hit 280, 300 and, and get on base and drive in runs. He's not a 30 home run guy, and he shouldn't try to be a 30 home run guy. But it, you know, in the last couple of years, everybody in Major League Baseball is getting getting uh, bomb happy. They all want to hit home runs. They're all about launch angle. But I would love to see Jeff McNeil on the New York Yankees. Send send the Mets a bullpen arm. Send them something. But but if they if, if they can make that trade happen, not that the Mets and Yankees ever really make trades. But if they could make that trade happen, where 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 they're sending a legitimate player in in the deal, what was the last trade the Mets and the Yankees made? I totally forget. But Ron Swoboda. No, it wasn't that. I know. But it was it was it well, was he played for both. It was a few years ago. It was like uh, it, it involved like a, a, a bullpen arm or something. It was just it was a couple of nobodies in the trade. But I would love to see that. So anyway, um, and, and Mets fans are still screaming about, oh, we need to sign Javi Baez. Where are you going to play him? It's bye already bye, it's already crowded. Bye bye. You want to make it more crowded, and Javi Baez is going to need nine figures. He, he's going right. to take at least 120, 140, or more million to sign Javi Baez. Okay. And 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 all also by the way, brother, and and this is even before Max Scherzer and his forty two million dollars a year is on the payroll. The Mets payroll already is two million dollars more than the Yankees right now. Well, so part of that is Robinson Cano, Cano twenty four million a year. He is signed until 2023. Yeah, like I just so, said. So I don't get the whole thing about the only the only way the Mets the only way they get rid of that contract is you trade him to somebody like the Pittsburgh Pirates. You have to include a prospect, and the Mets are eating for out of 48 million. The Mets would have to eat 40 million of it, at least. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'd do that because the Pirates the Pirates probably would pay Cano four million a year to have him be their second baseman for the next two years. Or, or somebody like the Pirates. They pick a bad team that's rebuilding. You think that being caught with PED with D's would uh, just void the contract, you know? Well, maybe it should, but that's not how baseball is. Uh, not right now. Anyway. Um, so here, And one more thing about the Mets, thing. bro, because I know you want to change the subject. Uh, Steve Cohen, the stay Mets off, owner. Stay off Twitter. He, he needs to get off Twitter. You know? Steve Cohen, before before Steve Cohen decided to, to make it rain on Major League Baseball players, he, he came out and just completely embarrassed himself on Twitter, and it was over Steven Matz, which just makes no sense to me. First of all, A, why are the Mets negotiating with Steven Matz? Steven Matz was terrible while he was here. Why yeah. would you want to bring the guy who was terrible back just because he had a decent season with the Toronto uh, Blue Jays last season? It doesn't make any sense. But the Mets were negotiating. Apparently, they worked out a deal with Matt's agent that they would have the opportunity to match or beat whatever contract offer Matt's got. Right. And instead, Matt's decided, hey, you know what? Cardinals made a good offer. They went to a fourth year, the forty-four million, which really, I mean, to me, isn't that great a deal. But fine, he wants for, he wants the deal but for Stephen Matz. It is. Yeah, for Stephen Matz, it is. So, uh, St. Louis is approximately, I, I, I heard, five hours from where Matt's now lives in Tennessee. Matt's, as people should know, is, is a Suffolk County kid, grew up in Suffolk. Uh, but he lives in Tennessee now with his wife. St. Louis is about five hours away. Right. Not, not, a, not a short drive, but not a long no, drive. No, but as we know from our relatives who live in the Midwest, a five-hour drive isn't really a, a, yeah, it's round, a around the corner. It's around the corner. Around the corner that. out there. So Steve Matt says, yeah, all right, tell St. Louis we're, we're, we're good, we're going. Steve Cohen gets on Twitter and just goes nuts and, and says, oh, somebody's your person's word used to mean something. And when you make an agreement, then you're supposed to honor it. And, blah. and I'm like, dude, it's Stephen Matz. This is not worth getting upset about. No, no, no. And isn't. then he goes out and, and two or three days later, he's offering Max Scherzer 40, 40 something million a year. Max should uh, send a thank you gift to Matz. So <laughs> I, I, I just I don't get it. Steve, Stephen Cohen 
I understand he he's a Met fan. I get it. But don't act like Met fans on Twitter because it's never going to go well. And, and it, it, it really was embarrassing for, for the owner of a team to go off on, on Twitter on, on a player's agent like he did. So he, 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 either, needs, he either needs somebody. He needs to hire somebody because let's face it, Cohen's got as much money as God. He needs to hire somebody. And, and I am available. But he needs to hire somebody to kind of moderate his Twitter. Well, you're on Twitter and, a lot. And you're, to on, say, you're on Facebook. You've been kicked off Facebook and, for and, a month at a time. And to say to him, to say to Steve Cohen, yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah, well. Don't do that. He needs that person on his payroll. Because right now, Stephen, Steve Cohen, Twitter aside, has done a lot of really good things this week for the Mets. And Met fans, I'm sure, are thrilled with him at this point. But the whole attacking Stephen Matz and his agent, that was it was it was it was just it was ignorant. It was ugly. It was unnecessary, and and it, it just it makes me wonder again why why the Mets were even bothering with Stephen Matz in the first. Well, place. you know he's he's he thinks that everyone's on Twitter. It's going to make are. him look tougher, and they are. And, you are the only person that's not on Twitter, brother. And and I'm a better person for it. So, I I know that. So if you say so, I I do say so. Um, so anyway. Um, one more thing we should say. Michael Conforto, gone. Totally gone. He's not coming back at all. Um, well, we, we assume so. I mean, who uh, knows how many more players the Mets are going to buy. Apparently, the, the wallet is open. The and, wallet and, is and, open. And Steve, Cohen, mean... Steve Cohen is just going to, like I said, he's going to try to. Now that, now that the Mets are there as far as payroll, and by there I mean like up in the stratosphere. Right. Uh, keep spending. Well, when he bought Keep the spending. remember when he bought the team and, and he didn't go out and buy everyone the first two minutes and, and Met fans were upset they I were know. they were angry Met fans want the four hundred million dollar payroll yeah and, but, and I said that who I said it to Darren DeVivo and and he said oh where'd you come up with that number I'm like that's what Met fans want you just made that up to me but four, it's 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 you can't you can't have a four hundred million dollar sure you could you could if you wanted to yeah, you know you how much pay you pay in luxury tax two hundred million it would be a lot yeah you're not going to do it. And maybe he does it for the next couple of years because, you know, he's new kid in t- – well, not a new kid in town. He's a New Yorker, but he's a new kid to the Major League Baseball. He wants to establish himself. But to me, you know, I don't know. I mean – The Mets payroll – $42 could, million for a pitcher? Blows Mets, out his arm? Boom. Max Scherz is 37 years old. He, he, he's been a healthy pitcher. He is Cy Young caliber. Okay. If, if it takes $42 million to get him to say, you know what – He's been all he's been doing is saying, "I want to stay on the West Coast. I want to stay out here." I would trade deadline. He he only listed California teams or West Coast teams. The Mets didn't think they were going to get him. So how do you get him? Hey Max, we'll give you twenty million more than anybody else. Right. Well, and what's going on quickly with the Yankees, brother? There's rumors about <coughs> Gary rumors. Sanchez. Rumors about Gary and I Sanchez. I hate rumors, brother, because it's all speculation. If well, it doesn't turn out. You know, then we look like some. The, the, Mar- the Marlins are, are a very possible trade partner for Gary Sanchez because obviously there's a connection with the Marlins and the Yankees now that Derek Jeter is, is a part owner. Uh, I would love to see what I saw in this rumor last night because I would love to see Gary Sanchez traded because I, I, I just, I'm, I'm tired of waiting for Gary Sanchez to be the player that everybody says he's supposed to be. Uh, he is a poor defensive catcher. He, he's supposed to be this great hitter. I'm, I'm still waiting. Yeah. Um, I would take any Marlins pitcher for him, basically. The Marlins have a stable of good young pitchers. The Yankees desperately need pitching at this point. They need a number a number two. I was hoping that Max Scherzer was going to be that number two, to be honest with you. But now with $42 million a year, that's not going to happen. Uh, they, they have Cole. They have Severino. Um, they have – who else do they have? I don't know. Uh, Tyon. Okay, well – they, they, the, the Yankees have a pretty a decent rotation. I, I need to see an upgrade somewhere, and, and I think that's going to come by a trade. But I know the Yankees also are interested in, in trading for Matt Olson from, from the Oakland Athletics, which is also going to take a lot of prospect capital. So let's see where it goes. I would love it if Gary Sanchez for a pitcher. Make it happen. I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who the pitcher is. Okay. Make it happen. Marlins, Derek Jeter, say yes. Okay. We're going to take a break right now. You're listening to 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Give us a call, 
7440. Hey, I just got a ticket from one of those red light cameras. Good news. My show, Law You Should Know, can help you fight that. My brother just got arrested for shoplifting. My show has info about that too. My mom told me she's worried about whether she needs a will. Law You Should Know can help her with that. My cousin was hurt in a car accident. Can he sue? Law You Should Know can help with that too. My uncle has some legal questions, but he doesn't think he can afford a lawyer. Tell him to be sure to listen to Law You Should Know every Wednesday at 3 p.m. for lots of free info about the law right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Okay. Yo. Tell your friends about the Nassau Morning Madhouse. Hear what you're missing. Check it out. Check it out. I was actually thinking about taking up a hobby. I want to learn how to play a musical instrument. See, now that's interesting, finally. It's not going to be... What is wrong with you, Eric? It's not going to be a normal instrument. You strike me as a triangle person. That's the easiest instrument. Exactly. What's that thing that cowboys used to play with your teeth? It was like a boing. A jaws harp. Yeah, you just play that. How did you know what that is? I don't want to play the jaws harp because it's going to break my teeth. No one's asking you to. Spent a lot of money working on braces with my teeth. You know, I, I I want to keep them nice. You're but, a very um, strange bird. And maybe I can try the bass. Yo, doom, 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 doom. Okay, okay. Yeah, I can make sure that these bass do not encourage him. Please. We now have Morning Madhouse. Weekday mornings from 7 to 9. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. Frank Sinatra. Bing Crosby. Ella Fitzgerald. Dean Martin. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're making a list of artists you don't hear on the radio anymore. Wait, I know where you can hear all of them and more. Where? Right here on Standard Serenade. Join me, Glenn DeMilt, for two hours of great songs by the great stars. Saturday afternoon at 5 on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Ninety point three WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College, from the press box on your radio or your listening device at nccradio.org, iHeartRadio app, TuneIn.com, or Odyssey.com. This show becomes a podcast later on, at all the places you can get a podcast: Spreaker, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, wherever. We are there. By the way, I'm watching Mission Impossible last night, brother. They were going to shoot up Peter Graves with heroin. Oh, and and then it goes to commercial because he's playing a, a, a guy who's who's supposedly withdrawn from heroin, and they were going to give him the heroin so he would calm down, and then Linda Day George comes in and, and stops it. So, anyway. way to go, way to go, Linda. Yeah. So anyway, um, let's talk about. Um, I don't want to talk about the free agency out. I want to talk about the Islanders. How many games have they lost, brother? Eight games in a row. Eight in a row. What? what? That is crazy. I, I, I am I am so infuriated at the NHL right now. This is this is almost a an on purpose thing to get the Islanders because they should have, or well, they should be in a better position, you know, playing wise. They're horrible right now, but they're moved in their new arena. Maybe they felt, well, we don't need them to be good this year because well, they're horrible know. right now because they have half of Bridgeport, their minor league team, playing in the NHL. Right. Because they have eight players on the COVID protocol list. How many plus, say that again, brother? Eight, plus two players who are hurt. So, I, I don't know what the NHL was waiting for. I don't either. Because it, it was ridiculous. The Islanders were playing games. It was clear to anybody who was watching. It just all you have to do is see they can't score, and they can't score because they don't have any players. It's basically Matthew Barzal on the fourth line. Yep. Are the are the healthy forwards? Hard to believe. So, uh, what do you think is going to happen? They're losing games for nothing, for one, uh, and and the NHL is just looking the other way as, as the losses pile up. The Islanders at one point were, I want to say, something like five and five, three and one, or something like that. Yeah. They're now five eleven and one. Right. Not that's not good. They're in last place in the Metropolitan Division, uh, and, and we said this. We said this last week before the NHL finally stepped in and said, "All right, yeah, you know what? You guys got a lot of players on COVID. We're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna postpone a couple of your games." Yep. So they were supposed to play the Rangers. I think it was yesterday. 
They're supposed to play, I think it's the Flyers on Tuesday. Both of those games have been postponed. So so let's 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 allow the Islanders to get a few players back because it also it also affects the Bridgeport team. Right. If 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 half of their players are up are up in the if up playing in the major or in the uh, National Hockey League, that means a bunch of ECHL players are playing in the AHL, which probably means that Bridgeport is losing games. Get this, brother. Metropolitan Division, Washington Capitals leading fourteen and three. They're good. Uh, with OTL as five, overtime losses. Is that um, or whatever it is. Yeah. They've played twenty two games. The Islanders, who've played the least amount of games in the basically the division, uh, the whole Eastern Conference. How many? Five, ten, and two. They've played 17 games. Yeah. So no one is near them with the least amount of games except the Col- uh, Columbus Blue Jackets and the Jersey Devils. Everyone else has played over at least 20 games. Uh, this is maybe, the to me, it's the toughest division. But All right, but the Islanders have, what, 12 points? Uh, so, let's see, 12 points, yeah. All right, and who is in fourth place? Fourth place is Columbus with 24. And how many games? How many? You just said Columbus has similar game, similar games to the Islanders. They have nineteen games. The Islanders have seventeen. So the Islanders are in trouble. Yeah, right now they are. And 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 I, we have been saying since the season started: don't worry about the road trip. Don't worry about thirteen games on the road to start the season because they're going to get home games and they'll be able to win those games and they'll they'll be able to to reel in the teams above them. Well, the NHL just handed them. How many? What, five losses in a row? Basically, yeah, <clears throat> by not stepping in on this. The and Islanders haven't won a game at home. And, and nope. oh, my God, the insufferable Rangers fans. <sighs> After the Rangers won that game at UBS Arena, well, the, the, the memes on Twitter, oh, look, the Rangers have more wins at, home, at the UBS Arena than the Islanders. That's true. What a bunch of miserable people Ranger fans are. Well, we know that. We oh, know, my God. We know a lot God. of Ranger fans. Dude, dude, get a life, people. And they're Just our get friends. a life. It's, it's... So... But the whole point of this is that we said, don't worry, don't worry, don't panic. It's going to be bad to start. It's it's not you know it's not going to be pretty. Hopefully they can get through those thirteen games and be around five hundred. That's what we kept and they saying. They were pretty it over close over actually again. to that. They yeah. were, but they were. now five eleven and two. Five ten and two. Five ten and two. My bad. But that that's not good, and it, and it's it's a hole that just kept getting deeper. Because the NHL just kept looking the other way. And instead of saying, hey, you guys got a real COVID issue going on here. Let's postpone a couple of games. Let's give let's give you guys a week yep. to get some players back, to get some 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 uh, some negative tests, to get some guys back in the lineup so you can send the Bridgeport guys back to Bridgeport. Because this obviously isn't working. No. Uh, if if you're just going to say, all right, yeah, hey, go out, you know, it, it's it's, and and I can see the the argument being made by some people that hey, it's the Islanders' fault, and but they're they're vaccinated first of all, right. so so they they did what they were supposed to do. I, who knows what kind of variants we might be dealing with or whatever? I don't know, but they have COVID, right? So they're not going to play with COVID because they don't want to spread it around the league. And who knows if they did spread it around the league because there were guys playing. In those games that are now on the COVID protocol list. Yep. But one thing that nobody has has specifically said, but I can't imagine that this isn't true, is you know the NHL wanted that UBS arena opener to happen. Of course. And they wanted it to happen on the Saturday because that was the day that everybody was pointing towards for, for a year that this is when this is when the the, the home opener and the big uh, the big return to Long Island with the brand new beautiful arena. Well, they played. They lost to Calgary. Then the the, the next night they played again. They lost, and it was like they weren't going to cancel either one of those games. They weren't going to postpone either one. No, they were, they, but it, if you played a Saturday game, you're not going to postpone a Sunday game. So boom, boom. Here's right. Loss, and, and loss. Also, Gary Bettman shows up at the UBS Arena when they did the you know the cutting of the ribbon and everything. Right. You know, he's he's eating this up. You know, he hated the Coliseum. He hated, uh, he didn't really like the Barclays Center, but he he lived with it because it was wasn't the Coliseum. And then he was saying stuff like, "Well, we can't have a team playing in thirteen thousand nine hundred people. You know, that's not NHL." And then of course they he let it happen because who knows what was going to happen to him. And 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 he's he has. Well, a, I don't even know what that means. But he, no, he has on. a bad history 
with the uh, with Islanders and the Islanders fans. All right, you know? but you made it sound like his life was being threatened or something. Let's not go I'm there. I'm not saying his life is being threatened, but he, you know, he's constantly booed. He, everybody boos him. He's a commissioner. What commissioner no, doesn't he, get booed? They didn't boo uh, David Stern. They don't uh, uh, do Adam Silver. Yeah. You know? Stern, Stern they booed, but he, he, Roger Goodell, it came yeah. around. Roger, Roger Goodell. People hate Roger, Roger Goodell. Goodell. He, he's, he's a clown. He, he should be gone, too. And Bud Selig, everybody oh, hated him. Yeah. He, was, he was a bigger clown. Yeah, but the point being, nobody likes Gary Bettman, and Gary Bettman is is probably is one of well, it's not that there's that many commissioners, but he's certainly one of the least liked commissioners. But that was the issue. What was was the the UBS opener and, and playing that weekend and and getting all that done? But already the Islanders were were missing players, and and I I saw this. This is from uh, from Chris Botta, Chris Botta and at, at Chris Botta NHL. He he put together a list. Right. All right. November 16th, Bailey. November 19th, Lee and Johnston. November 20th, Green and Pellick. November 21st, Bellows. November 22nd, Chara. And then November 27th, there were supposedly more confirmed COVID positives for the Islanders. That was when the league finally stepped in and said, all right, yeah, we got we to gotta, we gotta take you off the ice because it, this is out of hand. And, and, and well, I mean, first of all, first of all, you never know who, who might have it and is still playing. Right, because it takes a couple of days for for you know for the positive to to actually but this is like, get tested. This is but so much of the team, though. I mean, it's it's a ton of the team. It's an absurd amount of the team, and 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 the argument has been going well. The Pittsburgh Penguins were in that situation, and the Ottawa Senators were in that situation, and, and they still had to play. Well, yeah, but this we're now in a situation. Both of those teams, as far as I know, wound up. Having their schedules, po- I know Ottawa. They want to. They want to postponing games. Right, right. I'm not 100 percent sure what happened with Pittsburgh, but I would have to assume the same thing happened. But when you get to a certain point, when, when you're talking about eight eight guys on a 20 man roster, it's almost it's 40 percent of your roster. It's almost half the roster. Right. You can't. You can't. I mean, the the NHL is is it's it's supposed to be about competition, and if one team is 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 severely hampered from being competitive. Then a what are what are people paying for? What are the fans paying for as far as tickets go? Right, they're not paying. They're not paying top dollar to see half of the Bridgeport team on the ice with no, play, names and numbers who they have no idea who these people are. You're asking you're asking fans to pay top dollar to see minor league hockey. Right, if you wanted to, you'd, you'd drive up to Bridgeport and watch it. You know? Exactly, stop off in New Haven or get a pizza on the way. Yeah, so. Anyway, so anyway, we hope the Islanders can start to pick up from this. Um, the, the, the only good thing about it is that they only they've only played seventeen games. So, but they have to dig out of this hole. Yeah. They're in. I mean, I, I'm I'm still going to say, don't panic. But there's a lot. I'm I'm feeling a lot more panic now I f- than you know at I, any point during the season. I start to panic with baseball and I'm not baseball with basketball and hockey after January six. That's always been my my cutoff point to start worrying. Because Christmas and everything else, I don't start worrying. I look at the team and say, okay, how bad are they in, on January can, can you pick a different date, please? January 7th. I don't care. What the Why? The difference? January 6th is not a good date, brother. Yeah, I know that, Tim. But, you know, that's the day I pick. That's what I've been picking Pick that a piece. different one. Sorry, January bro. 5th. How about that? January 5th, brother. Thank you, brother. Let's go there. Insurrection Day. <sighs> yeah. Let's take over the country. 516-572-7440 if you'd like to make a comment. Now let's get to the Jets and Giants, brother. Uh, Zach Wilson is back. The Jets actually won against the Texans yesterday, twenty-one to fourteen. How about that? Jets actually had, game. had decent defense, but the Texans are not known for their. Um, Texans are a terrible team. Uh, for anything, really, right now, <laughs> they're horrible. Texans. The te- I tell you what. No, you know what? I'm not even going to bother. No, um, the Texans are, are just, they're just a bad football team. They have two wins now. That now the Jets have three wins. So so the Jets, you know, cost cost themselves yesterday as far as as far as the the upcoming draft goes because that's that's what the Jets are playing for at this point is, is draft position. Uh, but you know what? Good for them. Good for them that they won a game. But and, the players aren't. You know. Yeah, I'm, I, I've always I've always maintained this. Bro. The players, you know, fans can talk about it all they want. Is, is that you know playing playing for draft position and and playing for a better pick, but. This this is this is the job for the players. This is what they do. 
And right. if they don't do it well, they get cut. Right. But, and but and but then also they're working the, at a supermarket the only, next year. The only time it, it matters is when the team specifically says, okay, we're going to put our third line in. And we're going to have you know, the guys who start, they can just watch from the side. They don't do that, though. I know they don't. But if that happened, then you would know the team is, is trying to you know, gut their team so they can be ready for next year. They would just trade guys. But, yes, I understand what you're saying. Um, but Zach Wilson, not great yesterday. Certainly, it wasn't. It wasn't any sort of any sort of triumphant return for Zach Wilson that, that I, I'm sure Jeff fans were hoping for. Uh, but you know, Zach Wilson was the guy yesterday, and he had to be. This this goes back to uh, to to one one of the most Jet episodes, probably in franchise history, in, in that they they trade for Joe Flacco to be the backup quarterback after Zach Wilson got hurt. Right. Uh, Joe Flacco, unvaccinated, comes to the Jets. He's he's doing press conferences with a mask on because that's NFL protocol. If, if, if you're not vaccinated, you have to wear a mask during a press conference. And then the week after he starts, he catches COVID and and gives it to, to Mike White. So now the Jets, now they have to keep Josh Johnson. So Josh Johnson was the backup quarterback. Yesterday. And he actually scored on two-point conversion. But... That is that is what happens with the Jets. The Jets actually gave up a sixth round draft pick to bring COVID to their team. Nice job. I, you know what? If, so if, if I owned a team, I'd say I'm sorry. You know, you don't you don't you don't have your shot. You don't have your vaccination. You know, we're not going to get you. I'm sorry. I, you know, it's no, you can get it. You, yeah, it's just it's just much easier on the team if you have a shot. Of course. But Joe Flacco didn't want to get the shot, and then li- literally a couple of weeks after he becomes a Jet, he catches COVID. Yeah. So, so that was silly. But Zach Wilson comes back. Uh, he, I mean, he was good enough to win. Fourteen for twenty-four, hundred forty-five yards. Certainly not great numbers. Had an interception. Um, but the Jets, after falling behind fourteen to three, because uh, Houston scored both of their touchdowns in the second quarter. Uh, Zach Wilson leads leads the, the Jets on a 70-yard 10-play uh, drive, and they get a touchdown from Austin Waller, a two-yard run. So it was the two-point conversion from Josh Johnson. Makes it 14-11 at halftime. So the Jets are in the game. Not a good game, though. Terrible game, really. No. An ugly game. Not a, not a good game to watch. Um, and then in the uh, third quarter, I believe it was, Wilson leads him on another drive, calls his own number. I'll tell you what, for a guy with a hurt knee – the cutback that he made on, on his running, he, he was going right and, and just, just I mean, looked, looked like a running back the way he made the cut. Just just pivoted, hit the hole perfectly. Maybe that's why his gets, knee hurts. Gets into the end zone, touchdown, and, and the Jets take the 18-14 to 14 lead. Uh, Matt Amendola adds a second field goal of the game in the fourth quarter, 21-14. Now, the one thing, first of all, Zach Wilson's uh, first road win, since it was the Jets' first win, uh, road win of the season, uh, but one, you know, you're like those Ranger fans who say they have more wins at UBS than the Islanders. Come on, no, it's his first road win. It's, it's, he's, well, that's, that's nothing negative there. Not <laughs> important though. But yeah, it is. It is for the Jets to win on the road. It's actually a good thing. But Zach Wilson made the mistake after the game. After the game, he, he's doing interviews afterwards. He admits first of all that the knee isn't 100. Yeah, well, you, you never admit no, that. Never admit that. Never admit that. Never tell anybody that you're hurting. Because that defense's target hurt body parts, so now Zach Wilson, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that, that the defenses were, were looking to test his knee anyway. But now with Zach Wilson telling him, yeah, it's not really 100. Uh, percent You're going to get hit in the knees next week. Yeah. Count on it. Yeah. Well. Count on. Maybe it. next week will be better. The, the Jets, the Jets will be playing Philadelphia on Sunday. So not a, another not a good team because that's the team the Giants beat yesterday. Wow, that's really bad. Two wins, two wins on the same day for New York football, unbelievable. So and, and Philly is five and seven. Yes, and the Giants are now four and seven. The Giants that, that brother could've... are on the fringe of a, a potential wild card. But spot. you know, if the if Philadelphia had won, they would have been six and six. Dallas is and, seven and, and four. Yeah, Dallas. We're not even worried about Dallas is a playoff team. Where, where I don't the, know, Tim. The last, only the only thing last they were, year they they almost no. didn't do it. And if, if if the Giants are going to consider on the fringe at four and seven for a wild card spot, not for a division yeah. title. Yeah, well, no. we're, we're we're not we're not talking about division titles this year because <clears throat> last year everybody in the division was bad. This year the Cowboys are good, yeah. or they're pretty good. 
you know, the, the Cowboys are a little bit of a hoax. You always, always root against the Cowboys. Well, no. everybody roots against the Cowboys. But anyway, Giants, the best thing about the, the Giants game yesterday was, was Michael Strahan's number 92 being retired at halftime. Right, right. Because the game was terrible. No, it was, it was it, you know, it was good to have him there, you know, and, and you just forget how, how incredible he was to the team and how they don't have a guy like him around. No, we wish they did. And, and then, you know, every time I see Strahan, Tim, I think about what could have been for Tiki Barber. Well, and it, 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 it is what what it is for Michael Strahan. I know Michael Strahan is now going to space, brother. I didn't know that. He's 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 getting on the Bezos rocket. Oh, he's going to be going into space. The vomit comet. Well, whatever you want to call it, but you know he he is going. He's going. I think he, I think that probably will make him the biggest astronaut in history. Are we calling them astronauts for the, for the I don't know what for, the, for these uh, for these flights? I don't I even don't know. know. They just sort of sit there and they can <laughs> float for a couple of minutes. Right, That's yeah, go out, go up, hang out a little bit. But anyway, like I said, thirteen seven was the final score. So horrible. You like you like that that on the day that they retire Strahan's number that the Giants defense won this game, but it really was more offensive ineptitude by the Eagles because Jalen Hurts, the Eagles quarterback, threw three interceptions. Um, the Giants now have uh, have at least one interception in eight straight games, which which is, uh, is is the high in the NFL right now. So at least they're doing something right. Um, the offense for everybody who, who who expected, well, the Giants fired Jason Garrett last week, and now the offense is gonna is gonna go crazy and and you know do everything that they're supposed to do. Uh, yeah, I don't think you've been paying attention this season uh, because the offense was 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 still brutal. Right, right. Um, I, I don't even know. It, it's, you know, Freddie, Freddie Kitchens was, was uh, the assistant coach calling the plays. Offense was held at 264 yards, but but did did control possession. They had 32 minutes of possession, which, fine, it worked. Um, but the Giants got the – they took a 10 nothing lead uh, in the third quarter. They stopped the Eagles on fourth down. Went 59 yards in 10 plays. Uh, Daniel Jones to Chris Myrick for a one-yard touchdown pass. Not bad. Not bad, yeah. So the Eagles finally got a touchdown. They answered. And the uh, the Giants then kicked a field goal. The Eagles on the last play of the game, they were on the Giants, I think, around a 32. Right. Jalen Hurts throws a ball. I don't know who the receiver was. Ball goes right through his hands at the goal line. Now, he would have come down, and he would not have been in the end zone. So it's, it, 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 it certainly can be debated, would it, would it have been a touchdown? Because if, if the defender who was right on this guy's back pushes him over, right. then, then we're talking about a yard short and the game's over. But if he leans back into the end zone with a catch, I don't know how he missed the ball. The ball literally went right through his hands. Professional receiver is supposed to catch that ball. And he probably wasn't expecting it. <laughs> no, he was expecting it. The ball came right to him. It was it was it was literally head high, right right through his hands. I, I I'm like, it's a high school kid making making that miss. Okay. I, I couldn't believe that 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 you don't make that play, especially last play of the game. You don't get to drop that ball. No, no. Focus. So okay. anyway, Giants four and seven. Like I said, on the fringe of the wild card. I don't know what's going to happen. Daniel Jones. Wasn't bad, but he certainly wasn't good. Uh, 19 for 30, 202 yards in that touchdown. Um, Giants go go to Miami to play the Dolphins on Sunday. I got news for you. The Giants are losing that game. Of course. Miami Dolphins are playing really well for the last month. And I don't know how many people notice it yet because they dug themselves such a hole early in the season. But the Dolphins are good. Miami's 5-7. and, five and seven, so. Yeah, but they've won four in a row. Right. And, okay. and Tua... Finally, looks like the guy they drafted, as opposed to the guy he's been for the last couple seasons. Right, right. Tua is throw. Tua is completing like eighty percent of his passes, and he's not he's not tearing it up like you know, three hundred fifty yards, but he's moving the ball, and he's driving the offense, and he's getting it done for the Dolphins. Right. right. So, I I don't see the Giants winning that game next week. Yeah. I really don't. I wish I could be more optimistic. We gotta read this, brother. Go ahead, read. Don't forget about the unforgettables every Saturday at nine p.m. Host Michael Anthony presents two hours of jazz and standards with artist profiles and guests who make the music happen. That's the Unforgettables every Saturday 
at 9 p.m. right here on 90.3 WHPC. A couple of things before we leave, brother. Uh, NYCFC, the team looking for right. a nickname, uh, faces uh, top seed New England Revolution on Tuesday in the Eastern Conference semifinals for MLS. Yes, they will be playing soccer in December. You can't have that MLS. I'm sorry. New England Revolution, coached by uh, National Community College product, Bruce Arena. Bruce Arena. And the Philadelphia Union advance via PKs on Sunday. Uh, Nashville somehow managed to miss all four of their PKs. How do you do that? It was unbelievable. They they, they kicked two of them over the bar. The That's last, horrible. the last, the third and the fourth ones over the bar. And uh, Man City defeated West Ham two to one. Liverpool go Liverpool won four nothing to stay in third in the Premier League, or pre- as I like to call it, the Premier League. Ugh, why do you keep? Because I, I just... It's I, annoying. I it's, just annoying. it's annoying and false. It, that's Man, the way they say it. Manchester United, brother, under a new caretaker manager, Michael Carrick, right. held, held first place Chelsea to a 1-1 draw. Right. Uh, Jorginho, who actually skied a penalty kick of his own uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, actually scored on a penalty kick in the 69th minute to equalize for Chelsea, uh, which, uh, as I said, is, is atop the Premier League standings, but their lead has shrunk to one point. Right. Tottenham... Wound up having the game postponed yesterday because of, because of snow. You see, they shouldn't be playing s- snow soccer in, in, and snow. As they call it in the U.K., in the north. Yeah. they were up in Burnley, which yeah. apparently is near Manchester. I don't know. Uh, you can't play. You, or at least you've got to play in shorts. You know, get some sweatpants or something. Why I wouldn't should, mind that. I would we care. Played, I, we it, once, it, our first game ever we ever played soccer. I was like seven. No, you weren't. It was 1972, was. Mr. Carrero's team. Se- yeah, it so snowed the first <laughs> day, and you weren't seven in 1972. Do some math, brother. You were eight. Oh, no, no you were seven, actually. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, you were right you were, again. You were right again, brother. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Seven. And it's... the ground was frozen. We're running around in cleats, and we're running around in shorts. We're yeah. like, what's going on here? Yeah, and we came back for more. We did, of course, but it was horrible. Anyway, one more thing. If you grew up uh, in the 70s and 80s and watch the Professional Bowling Association on ABC. Chris Schenkel. Bo Chris Schenkel and uh, Bo Burton. Mark Roth, who was an eight-time champion has well, he died. won. He won thirty-four total, total tournament but victories, he, but PBA titles. Yeah, PBA. Is he he has died, according to reports. He was seventy. He had been suffering from uh, congestive heart failure, pneumonia, and had diabetes. He also had two, at least two, heart attacks in two thousand nine and two thousand nineteen. Uh, he is number what's see sixth all time. Sixth all time on, on, on the PBA tournament victories. Vic, tournament victories. Who put in the PBA Hall of Fame in nineteen eighty seven, and the U.S. Bowling. Congress Hall of Fame in 2009. The thing I remember about him was he was like your regular bowling guy. Yeah. You know, he was and he, he was like the first kind of cranker. Yeah. You know, like like now everybody they don't even they don't even use their thumb in the ball. So the right. ball the ball the hooks are, are incredible. Right. But Mark Roth was a guy who he he would just kind of like take six steps in yeah. his delivery. So his delivery was unorthodox in the first place and he would just like let it rip. And you could hear because his thumb hole was so tight, you could hear the thumb pop, pop yeah. out of the ball. Well, and he was just. You know what I liked about him? You know, you had guys like Earl Anthony, who was very gentlemanly, and Pete Business Pete Weber. Pete Weber's a crazy guy. Crazy guy, but he also was thin. And then you see Mark Roth, who you know loved his French fries. He he probably went to the to the uh, the the what is it, the snack bar a couple of times during the week. You know, the week to get you know pieces of pizza or a couple of beers or whatever. He was a regular Joe, and uh, uh, people enjoyed him for that. And, you know, that was when PBA bowling was PBA bowling, man, because it's on Fox Sports, but it's on at weird times. And it was great that it was on for an hour and a half, 2.30 to 4 o'clock on ABC. And no matter what happened, they would finish all five matches by uh, by 4 o'clock. I loved when it would be a blowout. and go, oh, okay, we're going to take a break right now and <laughs> get their commercials in. By the way, brother, apparently cousin Jeff is watching. He's telling telling me that uh, that the snow in the UK that he says that there are some dudes that have been stuck in a pub in Yorkshire for about three days now. Wow! They don't imagine. have they don't have plows over there wow. because they does they don't get snow very often. So it snowed a lot up up in the north. So yeah, this wouldn't surprise me if there's dudes stuck in the pub. Wow! Imagine worst worst places to be stuck. Imagine you're <laughs> stuck in a pub. I mean, I'm sure Big Ed. Oh. Big Ed would like to be stuck he, in a pub. He, he might be stuck in a pub, maybe other places too. You know, with Big, Ed, Big Ed's got everything. the truck. He's got everything. Big Ed would never get stuck anywhere. That's true. He, Come on. He'd have the, the giant Ed, snow Big chains getting, on. Big Ed would be pulling everybody out. He'd be digging, out. He'd out. Be digging out everyone's car. Come on, let's go, everyone. Let's do it. So, you know, Big Ed. Follow me. Follow, follow me, me to freedom. Follow me to freedom. <laughs> Charlie Steiner.
<laughs> anyway, brother, thank you. Another great show. Make, make sure you listen to the Sports Talk at 4 o'clock today with our friends uh, Mike Malo and then Matt Leonard and the rest of the boys. Because. And, and some, some girls, too. too. So we, we don't know everyone's name, but we, we know some of them. And uh, coming up next, he's called Big Ed for many reasons. But the only reason I know is he's, he's a damn good disc jockey. <laughs> Take care. My name is Rob Leonard. He is Tim Leonard. This will be a podcast later on. Bye-bye.